what's going on? So in today's super easy Photoshop tutorial, we're doing a photo manipulation of a guy. He's looking up the sky, you know, he's reaching, and he's got a neon glow. It's super appealing, super easy. Um, you might need a little bit of a background of Photoshop, but if you have that knowledge, oh, it's gonna blow by, it's gonna be easy how to do it. If you haven't had the chance to, please like and subscribe. It sure means a lot to me, uh, and I'd love to keep doing these videos. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so before I get started, I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that if you're doing your artwork for anything other than for fun, uh, you need to use royalty-free images. That way you can redo, uh, reuse or resell. So I imported my image that I want to cut out. So I'm going to use the pen tool right now. You can also hit, uh, just type P for pen tool and it'll pull up that tool real quick. So I'm just going to outline my subject using the pen tool. Make sure to go through and take your time. The pen tool can be a little tricky to understand, but the more you play around with it, the better it'll get. After you've completed your outline, connecting the start to the, to the finish, you're gonna to wanna to go to the path section and click on the little selection tool. That'll turn your, high, or your highlighted pen tool into a selection. And from there, you can copy and paste your selected area into a new layer. When I'm going through my process of what I wanna create and what, what kind of photos I wanna use, I try to make sure they're all in the same color family group. That way in the very end, it's easier to change the hue and saturation so they all match. The next step is importing a new photo. And uh, when I bring that in, I'm gonna bring it under the layer that I just copy and pasted. That way it's in the background. I'm doing the same thing with the buildings and I'm just aligning them up and scaling them to the size I wanna be. Scale an image, uh, you just hit Control T or you can go to the transform tool and you can scale up, down, left, right, any way you want. Right now I'm just performing the same process I did to cut the guy out. Uh, I'm just tracing the buildings using the pen tool. And then after I continue my full selection, I just go over to that paths panel and click the selection. It looks like ants walking in a circle. Just click on that and it'll change into a selection mode and that way you can either copy and paste or you can, in this case, I'm actually gonna be deleting the background. So you can kind of see it forming now that I cut the background out of the buildings. I'm gonna bring in the crop a little bit, that way the guy is the main focus and there's not too much sky. I'm importing some asteroids I got off the internet, made sure they're royalty free or free to use. After I've brought in the asteroids, I want to put them in the very back layer, only one before the sky layer. That way it's behind the buildings. My next step is to make the sky background a little bit darker. So I just going to bring down the brightness using the brightness and, and contrast tab. And then right now I'm going to go open up color mixer and I'm going to play around until I get the right hue that I want and the right saturation of the sky. And I'm just gonna repeat that process with the building as well as the guy cut out to make sure they're all the same hue. The next step in my process is using the clone stamp tool. Um, you can hit just S for a shortcut. So using the clone stamp tool, you can click Alt to click on an image or a spot on the image that you want to copy. And then the circle part is where it's going to be copied to. So you can see right here, I'm following these lines by selecting on this hard line and then clicking in the circle where I want that to be. And then I'm just literally following the line all the way to the edge. The clone stamp is a tricky one. It's one you might want to play around with uh, before you get the hang of it or feel comfortable. Once you get comfortable with it, it's super easy to use and super nice to get rid of any background or main, main ground image. So bringing in the, the glow triangle, you're gonna wanna create a new layer on top of everything and use the brush tool. And I make my brush size pretty small for these, for these uh, neon glows. So 
after I finish my triangle, you'll want to go to filter and then blur and then Gaussian blur. And then you play around with the blurs that you like um, to the scale or width you like of the blur. Using the eraser tool, I'm going to erase the, that part of this layer that I want the line to go behind my main subject. That way it kind of looks like it's intertwining my main subject to give it a real appeal. So to add the colorful part of the glow, you want to create a new layer, bring it below your white layer that you just created in the triangle. And using the brush tool, you're gonna to select a color that you wanna use. In this case, I used orange to match my style of this photo. Once you choose your right brush size that you want, you're gonna click on one side of the triangle, one point, hold shift, and then click on the bottom or one of the corners. And then holding down shift is gonna create a straight line. So for some glow to go on this guy's uh, butt area, I created a new layer. I got my brush tool and I kind of drew where I wanted that glow to be. With the, the neon color layer, you're gonna wanna turn it to screen. That way you can still see some detail on our main figure, but it also gives this really cool highlighted look. You can see now on that same layer that I'm just clicking some spots that I want the triangle to look like it's glowing even more so or we're maybe even reflecting off the, off the light. One thing I do in a lot of my photos in the very end is I create a vignette. So there's multiple, multiple ways of doing this, but I just bring a new layer in, a new solid square layer, and then I grab my eraser tool and I bring it as big as I can, and then I just slowly start clicking away until I get the roundness vignette fill that I want for, for that photo. I feel like a vignette on these kind of photo manipulations always just brings this main part to life. Like it helps this triangle glow like crazy. I want the guy to be the main focal point, so I'm actually gonna add a little bit of blur to the, to the background as well as the asteroids. And uh, I did a little bit on top of the buildings as well. That way the main focal point is still the man and the part where we're gonna add the triangle in later. The last thing I'm doing overall is I'm creating an adjustment layer uh, and I'm gonna make it a color balance adjustment. So that way it's adjusting everything below that layer. And I'm just gonna play around with the colors until I get the right kind of image that I want and the right feel. So there you have it. Those are the steps on how I create my photo manipulations. Please leave comments, um, critique my work. Let me know how I can better these tutorials or how I can even make them more interesting. Maybe it's my voice, who knows. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this far. Please like and subscribe.